Hey guys, what's up and welcome. It's Matthew here, the designer and developer, the hybrid, the best of both worlds from South Africa. This is going to be an awesome video. You are going to learn a lot from this video. Have you ever heard of design patterns? Okay, design pattern, it's something that you are supposed to first learn in school or in YouTube, but it is probably the last thing that you will learn thoroughly. Okay, design pattern are common solution to common occurring problem. This is an advanced concept, I can say, but it's not that advanced um, in such a way that you have to close your ears to it and you have to wait until you work for Google, Microsoft or Apple in order to implement it. In this video, we are going to dive deep into this package, React Hook Form or this library. This is a very awesome and powerful library. I repeat, very awesome and powerful library. But before we get into that, okay, let's warm up and prepare the soil for the seed that I am going to plant. What I'm hoping to do, I am hoping to act like the movie Inception, a dream inside a dream. There is a seed that I need to plant deeply into your brain. So I can't do that with um, a five minute video. I need to get into the different layers of your brain so that I can plant the seed so that it grows natural as if it's yours. Now let's get into the brain tester. Okay. We are still preparing. Okay. I am going to ask you a question that is obviously that you are going to get wrong. Okay. In case you got it right, please shoot a comment below. Okay. I am going to show you. Uh, let me just give you an idea of what React hook form is so that you can have a context before we get into it. Okay. Um, submitting a form from the internet. Um, maybe you are logging in or registering. Those are forms. Okay. So in coding, more especially in web development, it's not easy in in web development yes it's not easy to deal with forms forms are complicated forms are stressing forms they need a lot of things react hook form this library makes handling form super simple okay i am matthew singati the designer and developer i am not just only a coder but i am an architect i am going to dive deep into that what i did i went to two levels deeper than just using this react hook form i have created my own library my own package to make my life super and extremely simple so i have wrote an enterprise code a code that could be written by a microsoft a google or a spotify developer in this video i am going to unpack all of that so React hook form makes it easy to use form. You can just go to their website and see what they do. So let's just get into the brain teaser quickly to keep things going and keep it things um, flowing. Okay, so let's get into here. My question is, which is the best form in the forms that I'm going to show you? We've got this form. Okay. Okay, we've got this form. Click submit. Okay, it takes you to here that you have to click here. Okay, we've got this form. As you can see, take a closer look at it. Let me zoom it. Also, we've got this form. Okay, here is its own submit button. Okay. Okay, same thing. We've got this form. Okay, we've got this form. Okay, so let me refresh this form so that I can show you exactly what's going on here. Um, this is a multi-part form. Okay. Let me first test it. So this is the welcoming part section of the form. When you click start, it gets into personal details, as you can see. So here you can put your personal details. Let's click start without putting the personal details. Okay. This form will tell you right here. Okay. There is a school animation, um, username required. So um, when you start to fill in the username, as you can see, let's click next. As you can see, we are going to the next stage because we are done with the username. Okay. 
don't think hard about it okay maybe one might ask uh, what about this one don't really think hard about it okay just take it as it is you don't have to think hard about it okay so this is the form okay as you can see so it shows you that now we are on stage two these are educational details okay obviously also here you can put in information and then you can go to the third part as you can see so you can put your information here okay and then when you are done this is going to be the completion section where it tells you let's say congratulations maybe with some bit of animation of a circle and a green tick inside i hope you get the point so you can go back here okay and check here what goes on here okay it's telling you exactly where you are okay exactly where you are we are done with that and then let's check another form okay this is another form that we have okay let's try to save as you can see name is required say name is required okay we can type here now there's no need for that we can type here as you can see this disappeared and then we can type here and then we can submit when we want to okay let's scroll up a little bit we've got another form here okay okay let's see let's click, click submit as you can see it's telling us that the email is required let's see do we have a message okay enter a valid email okay this is my email as you can see that has disappeared a password let's just enter any password and then you can see it's the same form so my question is which is the best form here obviously you might ask in what criteria in any criteria in anything okay i just need your your answer okay in anything okay as you can see these are different forms okay so while you are still thinking about that you are choosing your best form let's get into how is this course structured okay so as i've told you that um in this course i am hoping to teach you something that is very rare on youtube on google on the internet in general and on udemy and skillshare this skill it's very rare okay let's just jump straight into it i am going to teach you design patterns okay design pattern okay what is a design pattern in software engineering a design pattern it's a general repeatable solution to a common occurring problem in software design as you can see here we don't have the word coding this video is not for coders coders they are all about it's working that's why they cross fingers when they are debugging hoping that there is no mistake when you are thinking like an architect or like an engineer you want those mistakes they are prob probably the easiest part of coding okay you you are, you are just looking for bugs okay um bugs lightens your brain okay it lightens your day okay? it makes you happy okay because you are a systems designer you are an architect but when you're a coder you are avoiding bugs okay you don't know the profit and how nice it is to solve bugs okay so bear in mind or please note that there is no coding here okay we are not coders we are not all about typing code if when you are watching a youtube tutorial you feel like somebody is talking too much and you wish they can get into typing you must know that you are in a coder as a coder you go fast but you don't go far what happens when you are a coder you quickly create a project you take two days to create it and it's guaranteed to fail on the fifth day because on the fifth day the code becomes complex and in software development we call it spaghetti it's not maintainable it's not scalable and it's not highly reusable okay so i hope you do get the idea of design pattern so let me just give you um some sort of an intro to design pattern so that you can understand exactly what i'm talking about originally i think the design pattern were published in a book um, with an acronym gof for the gang of four okay i think those were the first original design pattern or at least the publication of it okay so these design patterns they are closely relating to or usable in an oop language in an object oriented languages okay i can say these are a bit difficult design pattern let me put it that way okay they are a bit difficult but maybe i will teach them in this course okay 
so these are the design patterns so when you search on the internet and see these type of design pattern okay which are grouped into um different uh, categories okay we've got behavioral design pattern we've got structural design pattern and we've got creational design pattern these design pattern they are so suitable 100 percent suitable for object oriented programming but however learning them when you've got time on your spare time they will help you to improve your skill in coding in general so which design pattern am i talking about okay in terms of the definition that's exactly what we want to do okay there are so, uh, reputable solutions to common occurring problem let's stick with that principle but in terms of the actual design pattern please at this point in time since we are in react okay don't search for the gang of four and don't search for these design pattern okay you can check them in your own time okay however react has its own design pattern okay um let me just quickly uh, search for you here let's say react design pattern okay which is um this course is going to be some sort of a mix and match in a way okay i am going to clearly show you what does a professional do when they are coding that you don't do or that we don't do as amateurs or as the novice okay um as you can see a comprehensive guide to react design pattern so it's the same concept of design pattern okay let's say extracted from these design patterns okay but now this the scope here is very narrow okay please um this is just a random page okay so there might be things that you never know maybe i don't understand or whatever i was just telling you that this is just this is just a random page okay what are design patterns in react we don't really we've got a definition for that um i just want a list or example okay let's run okay um and sense code these are the maybe the benefits of design pattern i'm hoping to see a list of these design pattern okay in react we've got the hoc high order component it's a design pattern as you can see so these are the things that i'm talking about okay also the ones that i'm going to teach you here if i happen to see them in any website or here i will let you know that i'm going to teach you this okay cool and then let's continue hard here the provider pattern i don't think so okay i don't think so um let's see this one okay it's the one that you are going to master okay the reason why i'm i'm going to use this one it's the easiest to understand okay and it makes it not necessarily the easiest to implement but i'm going to explain it in such a way that you understand through and through okay this one presentation and container pattern okay in fact the the library that i've created that makes it easier for to use react hook form okay that, that i've created it's somewhat named okay around this pattern because i'm going to introduce to you a library or a, a, a reusable code that i've created and i call it met container i am matthew and it's a container for a form okay more about that later okay so i'm hoping to clearly explain to you the design patterns and how to use them okay what is challenging about design pattern when you read up about design patterns on the internet okay maybe you might find um something that is um, a website okay that is too complex for you to understand okay something like this even in react okay you find out it's difficult to wrap this around your head when you get into youtube if you are lucky enough to find a uh, um, a video or a course that talks about design pattern instead of being complex it's too abstract let me just put it this way it's too silly when i was learning design pattern okay i met a lot of tutorials that explain based on a class animal and a cat belong to that class because it's an animal and a cat meow so therefore a cat is an animal okay which those are interesting or they are 100 percent fine for teaching but now these problems are too not necessarily they are too simple they are not realistic when you get into the work environment these are the problems that you are going to deal with and there is no cat and meow here there is no car inheriting from trucks and trucks inheriting from a toy car and all that jazz okay so this is the common problem that we are facing in the design community okay it's not easy to 
walk somebody through the design pattern okay in the proper way way explained in plain english without bombastic words and also in a more practical and applicable way this is what i'm going to teach you here where i'm going to walk you through it you will understand what is a design pattern and how do you apply it and also how do you learn them okay cool and then uh where were we and then going forward let's just ask chat gpt so that i can explain whatever that i'm i'm saying and implementing according to these points okay this is not my definition okay i asked chat gpt how important are design patterns suppose i said in software development okay this is chat gpt's answer okay we are going to use this as a guiding rule so that i cannot what can i say teach you something out of reference I'm a human being, I might make mistake, and remember, I like to make myself intelligent, that's everyone's problem, especially in the coding community, we are all about how smart I am, not how clean the code is and how reusable it is. So, we are going to use this as a reference so that my intelligence cannot work against me, so that I cannot self-sabotage. I can only self-sabotage when I think I know too much and explain to you things which are not okay which that's wrong okay so we are going to use this as a guideline okay as some sort of um, a north star okay so how important are design pattern this is chat gpt design pattern are highly um in design pen are highly important in software development for several reasons number one reusability i'm going to talk about this when i'm getting you into my solution maintainability scalability communication best practice flexibility efficiency i am going to hit all of these seven points note this and please note this and write it in your own heart there is nothing that talks about code here not syntax not javascript language not um php not c sharp there is a reason okay in this video i'm hoping to teach you how to think about coding okay how to think structurally and um as an engineer and think about the architecture okay and the major entrance to that um one thing to note if you might hear a funny sound of my voice my apologies um there is a heavy rain here so my voice might be shaky a little bit um this is something that i cannot um it's out of my control my sincere apologies for that so I am going to teach you exactly how to apply design pattern the best way I know how. This is a video. This is a video that I wish I would have got when I was starting two years or three years ago. Okay. Enough about that. So now, where are we going to start? Okay. This is React Hook form. As I have said, it makes um, using forms very easy and efficient. Okay, let me just show you how it does that, and I'm going to show you um, a little bit of my code and the library that I've created. Okay, so that you can see um, the promise, so that I can give you the taste of the cake. Okay, so let's get into it. So, if maybe you are intimidated, um, you feel like um, whatever that I'm saying, it's um, way too far from you and you feel like you don't know much believe me just give me your ear this will be clear okay we are not going to post on the syntax and complex things simply because you don't see any complex thing here okay no special names and whatever this is just plain english i am going to keep it that simple okay just give me your ear that's all i need and your attention okay so now this is how you use uh, a react hook form i am going to get into the notes i'm going to explain through diagrams how this package or library works okay but this is how you use it i want to compare how you use it here and what i have done with it using um design patterns okay so what you do you install um the package obviously okay install the package and this is your react um, file so what you do you import the most important hook okay i hope the rain is not disturbing if it does my sincere apologies okay excuse me about that so 
what this does okay it makes use of a use form okay and it takes this hook use form from react okay there is a lot of things inside here which will make um using a form easy these are ready-made let's say methods okay inside this um hook okay cool let's see how do you use it check here now you want to extract register handle submit watch form state okay as these errors you are getting those from where from use form simple right plain english we are just extracting whatever that uh, the react hook form engineers has got for us inside this hook form we are extracting it without going further let me explain what goes on here in terms of the programming language okay this react hook form thing it's an api okay let me just quickly go here as you can see api application programming interface okay if you picture a car okay i don't know much about cars mercedes let's say okay i really don't know much about that okay so if you picture a mercedes okay on the outside it has got a perfect finishing or some lightning the gear the rear view mirror i'm not sure if that's interesting in cars the wheel caps and the shock absorber let's say those were cool things in cars okay as you can see it's beautiful it makes you to buy it okay now when you take the same car to the mechanic the mechanic maybe if i can there's no need for a picture you know a car the mechanic is interested in like in 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 the different aspect of a car i hope that was engine okay the mechanic is looking at the same car differently okay this is how the mechanic sees a car okay not more or less like this one okay so the the the, the mercedes benz engineers what they did they created an api an application programming interface for your eyes so that they can um so that they can help you i don't want car engine google i don't like what you are doing okay so that i hope this is a mercedes i'm not sure what symbol is this i hope this is a mercedes okay cool so so that you can see this instead of instead of this okay so what is that that's an api okay meaning that you are dealing with this something that is beautiful straight to the point you know that is if it's like a shape like this it has got wheels therefore it's a car when you get inside you will find leather seat um maybe with a special gearbox and airbags but still you don't see this okay so an api it's a very smart way okay or a very smart code that encapsulates which means it hides the most complex part the minute system and the most complex part of the system which is an engine and it present it in this form and in most cases we will give it a name okay we will call this a car knowing very well that we've encapsulated the engine we have covered the engine okay so react hook form is some sort of an api okay this um hook some sort of an api a programming interface some sort of a face a facade just like an atm in the bank behind the scene it's a complex machine and it's harder than the face that you see okay cool let's continue okay so this is like an api okay it contains a lot of things inside and it encapsulates those so now we are requesting a register handle submit watch form state in terms of these errors we are getting this from here if you've got any question or you feel like this is not plain english please shoot a comment below but believe me this is plain english the english might be grammatically incorrect maybe i might lose the tenses but believe me the meaning and the essence the content it's top notch okay usually that's what we say in south africa if something is the real mccoy okay um maybe i'm raising my voice because um the rain it's um raining heavy okay 
So my apologies about that. Okay, as you can see, guys, that's what we did here. Let's just skip this. Okay, I'm going to come back to it. Now let's create a form. Okay, the actual form. We've got the form tag here, the one that you are used to. And then we've got on submit. Okay, you know when we've got a form, at some point we need to submit it. Okay, click here. That means you are submitting the form. Okay. Um, usually you are submitting a form to a server. You are taking this data and you are submitting the form to a server, the data in fact. Okay, cool. Now, um, where was I? Okay, so this is um, some sort of a function that handles the submission. Okay, so in this function, okay, in this function, when the button has been pressed, okay, you need to do something but on react hook form how do you do that okay we've got a method called handle submit it consumes okay it consumes a method that will actually submit okay how does it does that check here guys this is handle submit it's consuming okay taking in okay like a snake when it swallows a rat taking in the on submit okay method okay and then the on submit method is the one that you are going to define okay for yourself meaning that this is your on submit it receives the data what data everything that is in here it's going to be passed to you through this data okay as you can see we don't know how okay it's an API, remember, a programming interface. A very beautiful thing. Okay, cool. Now you are going to receive this. And what are you going to do with it? These guys here, they are just console logging it. Simple, right? Cool. Now where we are, maybe somebody might not feel like it's important or somebody might feel like, ah, you know, that is obvious. Believe me, don't be careless in learning. Don't be casual. This is not the usual this is very important i have identified a good programming practice okay um on solid principle okay let's just quickly jump to there okay solid principles okay let's see i'm looking for a dependency injection okay let's see Okay, let's see. It's been a while since I have visited um, the solid principle, so I don't want to lie to you. Okay, as you can see, this one, it's dependency invasion. Okay, so that means this is not um, this pattern or this principle. Okay, it's not in the solid principle necessarily. Okay, so as I'm explaining things to you, I will touch based um like a, a lot of good programming practices like solid principle dry principle so it's not like we are going to zoom into design pattern but in general these are all some sort of tools for thinking these are the patterns which are used by highly paid developers and professionals to write an enterprise code if you don't know an enterprise code i will dive deep into it as we continue so as you can see guys my mind was telling me that this d it's for dependency injection and unfortunately this is dependency inversion okay it's very interesting pattern okay very interesting but it's a topic for another day okay so it means that a dependency injection it's some sort of a standalone pattern okay it doesn't really fall into um the solid principle so let me just type it. Maybe why don't we ask ChatGPT? Let's see, be dependency injection. Okay. Okay. So I want you to have um a lot of information so that dependency injection this is what I want. So I want you to have a lot of information so that you can get into the internet and do a research on your own. Okay. So when I'm coding subconsciously these are the things that i know okay and they are very difficult to teach because when you really know something like riding a bicycle you can't really transfer that skill it's, it's difficult for you to teach somebody you will just tell them get on it and and write okay you don't really have much so i'm trying by all means to collect my subconscious knowledge and bring it forth for you let's read here dependency injection aims to separate the concerns okay separation of concerns 
um, what is S in the solid principle? Uh, the single responsibility. This separation of consent and S of the single responsibility, they go hand in hand. Aims to separate the consents of our constructing object and using them. Okay, leading to loosely coupled program. Okay, the pattern ensure that an object or a function that wants to use a given service should not have to know how to construct those services. A bit complex, right? This is coded design. I am Matthew Singati, the designer and developer. Let's get into burning the concept. Burning the concept, it's like drilling it. Okay, remember I said. Just like um, Inception, we are going to get to dive deep into different layers of your brain, okay, and explain this thing, okay. So basically, the DI, okay, maybe they might talk of um, objects, okay, that means object-oriented programming, but you can substitute that with functions and method. If I am a method, okay, um, if I am a method, and my duty is to make shoes, okay, um if i have um a machine okay um to make shoes or let's say i have a tool okay that i want to use to make shoes okay the di um pattern states that me this is me okay i'm not sure why i'm a box okay maybe i come in four corners i don't know okay so this is me so if i've got this tool the dependency injection principle states that I have to, I don't have to know how to create that tool, okay? I don't have to assemble that tool and make it before I use it. Imagine if you were making every tool that you are going to use. Do you think you will finish anything? No. Dependency injection. So, whenever I'm going to use this tool, the best way to go about it is to receive it. Here is the tool. I'm receiving it and then I can just use it, okay? My apologies about my lazy diagrams but i hope you get the point okay so meaning that functions okay they always receive dependencies okay they receive dependencies this is not a mistake okay this is not just receiving parameters and passing arguments one might feel like these are just arguments these are dependencies because this method is depending on this for it to operate if this is not here maybe it might not operate so this is a dependency okay because it needs this to operate okay so let's just go back here so meaning that this function needs not to create this dependency it needs not to manufacture it it's it doesn't stick to the single responsibility now it's starting to do a lot of things instead of assembling it's starting to create it okay I heard um, there is um, a car manufacturer which is which has got a plant. I hope the word plant is the right word for representing a huge factory. Okay, there's a car manufacturer based on the international um, company or owners, but it's here in South Africa. So here in South Africa, we are just assembling. Okay, we don't create the parts; we only assemble it. Okay. As you can see, imagine if we were creating, obviously, maybe we don't have the bigger machine for creating this. It will mean that the company is, let's say, I'm not sure, guys, this this might be wrong. Okay, let's say the company is Volkswagen, let's say. Okay, so now Volkswagen International, where they are overseas, they've got a plant. Okay, they are very efficient on creating these parts. Us here in South Africa, maybe because of government rules, um, we can't have too big um, a plant, okay, from a company from overseas you never know government rules and politics okay so it's impossible now because of here in south africa we are only assembling it we don't really know how these were created if i can be speak a plain english and truth we don't care okay the guys the assembly line those guys they don't care they don't even even ask themselves how were these created i hope this is plain english and simple so let's check here the design pattern so these guys the this handle method it's receiving a dependency okay meaning that if you can remove this there must be an error because it needs it okay cool next step so when you click submit it doesn't matter where the submit button is this will be called 
okay it's important that it must receive okay then again as a dependency okay data so that it can use the data is that a plain english i think so let's continue now inside this form we've got the form inputs as usual okay cool now what you do to make your life easier you don't have to create Assume about that you don't have to create your own use state variables if you know how to deal with um inputs in react okay you might have a state here okay the use state variable and it will be responsible for catching all of these inputs things okay um this package makes it simpler for you to to do that okay all of that now when you've got an input what you just do you just open a code block and you will spread okay you will spread use the spread operator these three dots you will spread register and give it a name okay what can be spread okay what is register why i can spread register okay you can spread an array and you can spread um an object okay this is what you can spread if i've got this as an object let's say it's name dot dot matthew obviously the other one the other one and then i close this and give it uh, and put it inside the name register okay if it's like this that means i can just um i am lazy to write okay now it's starting to become a problem okay you might not get what i'm trying to say okay so let me be matured okay sometimes i behave like a kid my apologies about that okay i become too lazy sometimes let's say we've got a reg here and reg is an object okay the object has got name and the name is matthew okay and obviously it's a string okay there might be more of these okay there might be 10 names the name age gender uh, location and all of those okay you can spread this okay in an input let's say not going to write all of it open a code block one two three dot 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 three full stops okay and then reg what you are doing here you are just taking this to be exactly in here you are spreading it's like you are unpacking it here it's in a box but now you are unpacking it and putting these line by line let's say we had age here so that you can clearly understand so this will be converted to this i with um with name here like this name equal to what equal to met i'm not going to write all of it my apologies and age equal to 24 okay i'm not 24 by the way older than that okay so as you can see so you can close this okay and that is it so you are spreading this okay what if maybe this is an array let's say ar okay um can you spread an array i think so but 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 um i don't even have to check it on the internet okay it's not really but please guys make your own research can you spread an array okay remember don't want to tell you things which are not correct okay but this one i'm sure now you might ask then why are we on that register we are able to pass something okay now let's take this further okay on that register we are spreading the register okay we are spreading it but it looks like we are passing something okay let's say name okay which is uh, the name of the input okay now this looks like a function right so let us imagine let me just uh, start on a new slate here and i promise you my writing will be clear now let's imagine a function okay i'm not going to write the function definition as it is okay let's imagine a function register A function register receives obviously um a name okay assuming that this is not typescript we are going to say let's say a field name okay field name okay and then 
please also note that this is a pseudo code. It's not like the code that you can type on Visual Studio Code. But what is important, this will return, it will bring back an object. Okay. How it's going to do that, I'm going to explain it maybe later. Okay. Or it's not really, really that important. But it's very important to understand what register does. Okay. So then register will return an object. Okay. Now this object will have the name of that input. Okay. This input needs to have a name. Let's say the first one is going to be name, the other one is going to be age, the other one is going to be number, the other one is going to be password, the other one is going to be email. But that name will be here. And where is it going to take that name? Check here. It's going to put name dot dot field name. Can't I put this field name in a different color? Okay, just for the sake of explanation. Okay, it receives field name. Okay, and here is going to name that input um, what is inside the field name here. So let's put this variable as it is. Okay. Okay, as you can see. Now, next. Okay. Um, it has got a function which is on change. Okay. when this input changes okay and let's say the function it has got it here okay okay it will attach it here on change it will attach the function on change what am i trying to say here i'm trying to say this function can take um an argument okay and then it will return a different format. But that format is going to be a JSON object carrying a lot of things that are necessary. I hope that is clear and is plain English. So when you do this spread here, you are giving this input all the necessary data that it needs. If this input has got an on change, okay, event um listener or an on change event where whenever you type let me just show you i think uh which one i think this will show it practically um obviously here i didn't put the watch okay on my api let me check which one did i i think this one okay check here what will happen okay um we are on email check on email address here okay blah 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 check that is changing let me make it too long as you can see, it's changing this one. Okay. So how did this guy knows and how do we display all of this? Simply because when you are spreading register, automatically you get you get that on change event. Okay. I think now this is starting to, to make sense. Okay. You get all of the things needed. Okay. Okay, let's continue. And then you will do that for the the second input. Okay, as you can see, um, we've got register and um, which is the name? Where is the name? Uh, register and you pass the name. Oh, let's see, I'm lost in my own thoughts. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. This name of this input, according to this guys, um, obviously it's a bit confusing to me. Okay, but this is what's going on. Let's say this is the username. This can be username example. Okay. Now here they are showing you that in this one, they have made some restrictions, okay, so that this could be required. What does that mean? You can continue, okay, invalid, you can continue. It's not, this is not the, the exact definition of what I'm saying. Required is like this, as you can see, password required, it cannot be empty. So what they are showing you here is that you can also validate here by putting required is equal to true. That's why they have named this input example required meaning that you can have another input here put this and spread and then you can show these errors as you can see okay i think that is um react hook form okay uh it's simple like that and then obviously you need to have your button okay a form when you click on it automatically it refreshes the browser because that's how it usually sends the data to a server okay by default it does that okay but now since you have used you have handled 
the submit okay this handle submit will take care of everything your form it's not going to um submit the data somewhere else it will just take the data all of these automatically without you knowing about it remember i said api application programming interface without you knowing a lot about those it will take all of this it will give it to your own submit and you can do whatever you want to do let's demonstrate that okay let's start from here okay let me refresh also let me inspect okay as you can see we've got the name blah 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 we've got the same name blah 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 we've got the age obviously um I didn't validate if it must be numbers. Okay, as you can see, this is the information that we have. What makes this possible? It's a React hook form. Okay, it makes things easier for you. Okay, but this way of arranging it, it's my own intelligence. I've just created my own library to help me make it super, super stupidly simple to deal with React hook form. I dealt with it. Okay, it came with a lot of uh, complexity in a way. Okay, I wanted to produce forms like mcdonald's beggar okay that's an enterprise code where you want to make something super super simple scalable and efficient okay enough about that let's see so now when i'm done with this i am going to click save let's check the console and see this is what we have okay exactly as you can see you can make changes here and then we click save then we've got another one okay as you can see guys i'm using form it's very, 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 very simple. Okay, cool. And then, um, what else can we do now? Okay, let's go back here to see what we can talk about. Okay, this is, this. remember, this is not my own library for now, but this is reusable. You can import this use form and use it somewhere else. Okay, you don't have to write it every time. That's reusability maintainability it's a, a bit easier to maintain okay obviously i will show more of that on my own interface okay on my own on the met container okay that makes it easier for you to use this okay cool and then um that's reuse maintainability meaning that these guys the engineers can go to the actual source of this use form and they can easily maintain it okay because it's that simple for instance let me show, show you a practical example we can have a team of people who are working only on this register working only on this handle working only on this uh, watch because these are different methods and variable inside this hook form okay as you can see maintaining it becomes easier because it's loosely coupled okay um, maintainability scalability scalability think of it as duplicating could it be a max donald franchise where you produce the same quality in different places same time every time okay that means this looks like it can do that because i can just use this and then install the package use this and then that's it best practices i'm going to get deeper into that flexibility i'm going to get deeper into that efficiency I am going to get deeper into that. If you've got questions so far, please uh, feel free to, um, what can I say, uh, comment below, okay? And also you can um, get hold of me here through a discovery call. Give me your name and email and click here on the discovery call. I've got a 10-hour coaching course where I teach you exactly what you want to know, okay? Cool. And then in case you might want to um, to learn user interface design, which is a skill that is very important. I've got another channel here, which is Coded UI. Okay, which is Coded UI. You can come here. I teach people how to use Figma, as you can see, guys. Okay, I use, uh, I teach people how to use Figma. Okay, I hope things are still uh, simple. Let's keep it going and let's keep it flowing. And the rain is back. I hope that is not bothering you that much. <clears throat> My apologies about that. Now, mm, let's go back where? React hook form, okay? So, if you can go here, guys, okay? You will see that um, 
if you've got more inputs that means there is more register okay you always have to do this okay you have always to to do this okay now let me let me give you um as you can see the code expands as as you what can i say as your requirement expands okay so let me just bend the concept and give you some a few layers of the react hook form before i get into my code okay now this is how you must think about react hook form these are the layers of the react hook form okay the react hook form layers okay um number one it makes it easier for you to access and use let's just say form methods okay okay these form methods include everything variable and whatever any anything that you get from the react hook form okay form methods as you can see um another part of this okay number two it's validation okay something that is a little bit uh challenging okay my apologies about that validation okay to check is this an email is this a proper number is it a string that's validation and then another layer of this um one two three the third layer it's typescript okay so matthew what are you trying to say okay if you want to understand react folk form through and through okay like dead serious okay you need to understand these methods everything that it gives you to use you need to understand what is it and why validation okay the reason why i'm including validation here simply because you can validate and maybe type inside that register let's say this name is required okay but react hook form has got another package which is um resolver uh, my apologies about this resolver okay or resolvers okay but this resolver takes any validator okay there are packages which only specialized in validation they are not part of the react hook form but they can be integrated okay back to dependency injection you take let's, let's say for instance we are going to use zod you take zod as a package you don't really know how it was designed you must inject it into um a resolver okay okay you inject it into a resolver and i think it's zod resolver okay into a method called zod resolver okay you inject this okay this will help you to validate okay it gives you more functionalities like for instance when you want to validate for an email if you are using react hook form you have to use the pattern where did i see this pattern check here okay there is things like these okay when you want to do a uh, heavy validation okay but when you use zord it just gives you out of the box validation patterns okay makes it easier as you can see okay um scalability okay now react hook form is not zord okay but it has got an open window for accepting zord okay let's say an open door because if it's like a window if zord comes in now zord is more like hacking or breaking into the house okay getting into somebody's house through the window is not the best way okay so let's say react hook form has got a door okay for zord to visit okay as you can see this is how you are supposed to think about coding okay i know maybe you might be obsessed with react javascript php and you know more about the syntax and this is how you do things and you brag about that and i'm I'm happy with it but now we need to level up okay so um what principle can we mention here on the solid okay just like where we are on zord and react hook form okay 
let me go to uh the um, to, 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 where am I solid principle I'm going to show you I think it's the open close on solid principles okay as you can see now you are getting um a lot of things okay here okay so we can say my apologies for typing those mistake here I'm holding a pen at the same time as I am typing I think I want to get the message the images instead okay because the website can take time to give me what I want I'm looking for the open close in the in the solid principles okay and then I want images images will make my life easier okay are there any definition let's go back to this one okay can I zoom in this cool okay here is the open close principle entities should be open to have a door for extension okay when we are extending zord uh sorry react hook form we are not getting into the code and changing let me just make this clear we are not getting into the code and changing we can just open a door and zord will come and validate what if Zod is no longer a good friend for us? Well, we can open a door for another validator, which is, is the one that I was using before. It's very sad that I quickly uh, forgot this one. My apologies about that. Um, it's Zod. And I will think of it. Okay. So what if maybe we want to use another validator? We can go open the same door and change Zod and swap it with another validator with yep or yup or yap but it's yup now for now let's call it yep okay so you can use yep as a validator it will work as well what are you going to do are you going to change your code base no okay no we are not going to do that so as you can see once you start to think in this way okay you are starting to write an enterprise code okay a code that scales very well this is a very important intellectual asset okay of a developer that i know okay very very important and it's what i like about it it's language independent if i can be honest okay it doesn't really depends the solid principle they don't work on c sharp only or javascript or they work in all the language okay so i've just explained okay another design pattern the open close principle okay showing you that um this is how this is how the react hook form has been designed okay so i was under validation and then we've got a layer of typescript okay here i will just say learn typescript okay it might be difficult it might be complicated but you need it okay because how I've managed to manipulate um, the React hook form in to, to do what I want, it was because I have at least at least an understanding of TypeScript. Okay. At some point I have killed the TypeScript layer, some sort of muted it. Okay. When it's trying to bother me, I will just mute it for now. Okay. So I think we are we are doing well. I think we are progressing. I think this is plain English. Okay. You can shoot a comment below and tell me what what gets you stuck. Okay. Um, why I got into this, I'm creating um a course on for Skillshare. Okay. I hope I told you that we are on Skillshare as well. So soon this part will make um this is going to be a detailed and intense course on uh on Skillshare. Okay. In case you didn't know, we are also on Udemy. Okay, I want to check our course. Let's see something that will take us straight to the course. Okay, we are also on Udemy. We've got a course on Udemy. I will appreciate if you can come and check the course. Seventy percent of the course material is for free. Believe me, here in this course, okay, it's for free. There is a lot that you can watch on preview. Okay, so when you've got time, you are going to get there. This is our course. You can search here Matthew Singati, which is my name. Okay, in case you didn't know. Singati, it's um a Corsa name. Uh, what language is Corsa? The one for Trevor Noah, the one that he speaks. Okay, it's Corsa. It just means to comfort. I hope you find myself comforting. Okay, 
<laughs> I hope so. Okay, let's continue, guys. Enough about that. Um, where were we? So I hope this is plain English. Okay, this is React hook form. Okay. Now let's get into something that will help you to learn and master development, and that is problems. Okay, when we teach coding on YouTube, we don't present the problems; we just tell you the solution. Okay. Another React hook form tutorial. Remember, this one is not a React hook form tutorial necessarily, but it was very important for me to establish, you know, the ground rules, okay, so that we can play along, so that you can play the chess. Because if I don't introduce you to what's going on, when I'm getting into the solution, you might feel like it's too advanced for you. Okay, some tutorials, they just follow this and copy and paste. If it works, kumbaya. Okay, so this is coded design. We bend the concept. Okay. So now we need to introduce some problems. Okay, we need to introduce some problems. If you can make your own research and get into GitHub, this is how. This is basically how React for hook form is used. Okay, um, can I maybe check where there is a schema validation to show you how the code extends? Okay, how it it, it extends? Okay, as you can see now. We've got a schema validation here. They are using, yep, okay, the one that we are not going to use at the moment. Okay, um, I will tell you more about the reason later, okay? So they are using the schema validation. You are validating this form. And then from there, where are you taking the yep resolver? Here is the resolver, okay? Um, here you are taking this yep resolver. Okay, you are passing the schema. Here is the schema. You are passing it here. So as you can see, let's check how yep validates, okay? First name yep dot string dot required as you can see guys now we are no longer typing those things that we are typing age age dot number that means it will make sure that it's a number dot positive it must be a positive number dot in the integer it must be an integer it must be required okay as you can see guys now validating becomes easy go back to dependency injection you take this as a dependency and you inject it where here on yep resolver okay in fact, you are also injecting yep, okay, as a package, okay, as a package inside the React hook form, making your life easier. This is a loosely coupled code, okay. Let me give you a tip. Beginners think that you type and type and type and type and type and type. As you type, your code will become better. That is wrong. You plan and plan and plan and plan and plan without coding what we're actually doing. You plan and plan and plan and plan and think about code and plan and think about code. As you are planning and thinking about it, your code, even though you have not written it yet, okay, but your code becomes well-structured. It becomes beautiful. It becomes like a puzzle, okay? It's inviting. It's easy to read, highly maintainable and highly scalable. So planning and thinking about it, it's very important. Okay, cool. So um, what else can I demonstrate here? Mm, let's just check on code example. Okay, I'm hoping to show you how things can get um, complicated as time goes by. Okay, um, let's check here on version 7. Okay, um, the more you get into details about it, things are becoming complicated. Okay, register without errors. Um, I wish I can get uh, a full code. Okay, initial form state. Okay, let's just check here. Maybe, uh, maybe this might be a full code. Okay, that shows everything. Uh, where is use form? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, exactly. Okay, so let me introduce um my own package that I'm developing. Okay, I call it Met Container. Now, first we have to check the problem. Okay, cool. Let's see. This is how many lines? 68 lines, right? Yes. Okay, not a problem. Let's check how many inputs are here. Okay, let's check. This is an input. What's the name of the input? Uh, register its first name. Okay, this is um, the first input with all its validation. Okay, let's see. Um, what is the other one? The other one, it's last name. As you can see, they are registering the last name. Okay, cool. With errors. Okay, you have to type the errors. In my own package, 
you don't have to type those errors. You will see, guys, it's beautiful, okay? It's enterprise code. And then we've got an email, okay? With all its validation, okay? And what else? Now, do we have a button and a button? So it looks like to me, guys, we've got um three inputs and one button, okay? And how many lines? Let's just say for now, it makes 68 lines, okay? We are going to duplicate this using my own library, my own solution, my own intelligence. And then now things are going to start to be a little bit, not necessarily fishy, I'm not sure, interesting, okay? Check here. Let's say we would have been asked to duplicate this, okay? Here I created a new React um, project. I was testing this library. So when you are creating a package, okay, you need to make sure that it works. So after I tested it here, okay, this is Next.js. I tested it here. I was like, okay, let me copy it and use it on a blank React project, React code, okay, which doesn't use at the moment Tailwind CSS, okay. So let me just um, show you how I would create a new form to start with, okay. Excuse me. Okay, how would I create a new form? Okay, cool. Let's see. We, we just want to see how the code, how long is it going to take? So now I need to look for a code that has got um the React one. Let's see. This is empty. I think this is the React one. Okay. Check here. This sign in, I'm using Material UI. So if we comment this, um, I think this is too small. Okay, so let me also remove this. So if we comment this, okay, if we comment this, um, check here, let me put these side by side. Okay, let's see. Okay, and then where is, uh, I think this is what I want. Okay, as you can see, guys, if you comment it, it's not here. Okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to comment this as well so that it's not there okay cool right cool now let's start from scratch assuming that we are creating the same form we are creating this okay now i'm just going to show you the piece of technology that i've created i created a piece of technology which is called met container okay for now i'm just going to copy and paste Okay, yeah, okay, though I'm not used to copying and pasting this way, okay? So, as you can see, guys, this is met container, okay? Where am I importing it? Let's just check. Met container, component, met container, okay? My own code. Cool. Since we are in JavaScript here, okay? Here we are in JavaScript. This is pure um react js okay we are in javascript it doesn't tell us typescript is gone not even here so this doesn't tell us what it needs okay it doesn't tell us what it needs so obviously i will rely on copying and pasting here okay but maybe when i'm showing it showing you on typescript then typescript will tell us that this guy needs let's call it some 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 dependencies let's say there are things that it depends on okay but now take it religiously because it's a demonstration and we are not going to make a mistake because we are going to copy and paste okay so what we will do we will come here okay let me just show you like this okay um let's see what we will do we will create the on submit button okay function okay this is the function that is responsible for taking the data when it's submitted Okay, here is it. I'm creating here. Once this has been called, we are going to log the data. Where are we creating it? We are creating it in the application. Okay, remember I told you that um, this package or this solution has been inspired by a, what can I say? Has been inspired by um, the presentation container pattern, React presentation container pattern. So how how is this pattern working? Okay, cool. The pattern 
state that or it's something like this okay this is the whole thing the react hook form everything it's here okay there is some logic there is some code okay um that is here embedded as part of this okay so what i'm trying to do first i'm trying to separate the code the actual intelligence okay from the ui that's the idea of um presentation container okay though not exactly that okay but me this is how i'm using it so i'm creating a container that will handle all the intelligence that will encapsulate what has been encapsulated already react hook form is encapsulating something it's an api i'm creating an api of an api remember i told you about inception a dream inside a dream inside a dream a very interesting movie okay so let's continue so i'm encapsulating this as well okay how am i doing that this container okay it consumes the resolver okay remember i told you about the resolver for me my resolver is small okay cool where is my resolver let's see you create a zord resolver outside the container okay remember this container doesn't have to create this it doesn't have to do this okay it doesn't have to it's not its own responsibility then if we go to s on the solid principle it's for single responsibility so this container wants to do one thing and one thing only and do it very well that's part of an enterprise code so you need to inject a resolver here meaning that you are saying this is my schema this is a list of my fields okay which is us we're going to have three fields this is a list of my field and i have already validated those fields so what we are going to do we are going to modify this one okay right this schema okay cool so let's create our own schema okay we are going to have let's see we are going to okay it looks like i cannot edit this or maybe i can okay we are going to have a first name okay here in my code we are going to have a first name okay we are going to have a first name um what do they call they are last okay the second one it's last name okay we are going to have last name and what do hey they have they have got an email then that means let me copy and paste this okay okay in fact let me show you um the the validation thingy okay let's just type here email okay there are the other field so we're going to type z zot and then um zot dot string okay this must be a string and then from there it must be an email okay i want this to be an email it must have a minimum of at least okay a minimum of at least one um what is it uh, one character it can't be empty okay um email uh, required okay as you can see guys okay we are validating this okay we don't know the form and we don't care this is the beauty of design pattern okay of having architecture in your mind as you are coding okay so i think that's all but now what we need to do we need to check our validation since they are using yep let's make sure that we are sticking to their validation if possible so what we are going to do here we are going to um check their input where is it um the first name okay it's required i am done with that max length okay um it must be two and the message must be max max length it's two okay i don't know why a somebody's name must have a max length of two but obviously it's just a sample guys okay so let's try to do that okay um a minimum it's how small it can be okay so a maximum it's setting the boundary i think that makes makes sense okay so you cannot put less than two characters i think it's something like that okay cool now let's change this to max okay and our max here it's two and then um we can say here um what are they saying da, 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 max length max length is two okay 
let me just type here max is two okay so that you can understand uh, and that's it what else max length okay it's required okay i think that is fine let's check on the same name what are they doing okay on the last name uh, max length i think on the last name something same let's check on the email okay last name cool the errors for last name okay let's go back and check on the email email um as you can see the reason why i decided to go for zot i used to use yep okay but the reason why i decided to use zot it's similar because here on validating an email check here how they are doing it okay but this is not the only reason but i'm just uh, giving you an idea this is how they are validating the email using this complex pattern okay we are not going to do that i think we already done okay with this one to say that this email must be validated this is the advantage of zot so um let's say here valid let's put a double d so that when this works we know that this error is coming from here valid email okay and that's it so we are done with the validation part okay cool as you can see something that they did okay and then now i think we are ready to go okay and then we are going to take this form schema okay we've got a form resolver and we are using this okay putting into zord and then i'm going to copy this okay as you can see here i'm putting it inside resolver let's put this into a new resolver okay this is my container it's taking the resolver why i didn't take this to inside this container no this container is going to be a god method it knows a lot of things okay and since it's not god it will be confusing it's going to confuse confuse its own intelligence hence in doing so confusing me as a developer so do you see how we accidentally develop ourselves by trying to be too smart design pattern will help you to resolve that so i'm injecting here a resolver we are done this is a resolver for this okay cool what else is this um met container taking okay let's check here then we've got a method which is get form data it's telling you that this is how you are going to get the form data okay i'm encapsulating the handle the consumption of the handle thing and what 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 and what 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 let me quickly show you where is the form on submit okay handle submit and this I'm encapsulating that so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy this as it is because i am going to use this on submit and i'm going to log it too okay so um let me just use one line for now as you can see we have taken this what else is this um guy taking what we can do we can choose to watch for errors this one i will show you later my apologies about that i will show you later okay it comes with this package okay cool let's see so we've got everything here let me save and check on react as you can see still there is nothing okay cool now this is the interesting part now we want to create um what can i say the first input okay what i'm going to do using um this container i'm just going to type here input okay um it must be a self-closing tag okay let me show you some errors which might okay okay why simply because we need more information about this input let me tell you about the tricks and the tips and tricks okay as a beginner you think programming is accounting okay accounting it's a bit formal there are standard there are rules if you want to open a bank you can't open a bank if you are a normal guy you don't know you know nothing about accounting and whatever the government imposed strict rules to accountant in that discipline okay they've even got i think they might have things which are like more like practice number i think in in law and medicine they have okay so you might think of coding like that okay unfortunately coding is not like that okay we are not that serious here as a developer i can be employed by a big bank company and through my carelessness the company can shut down 
and I can change the economy in a negative way. Okay, that's that's the risk involved with us. Okay, we can do that. Okay, so I'm trying to say this is not a very serious discipline as you might think. Okay, so it has got an 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 art element in it. What do I mean by an art element in it? You've got a way of bypassing things. Okay, let me show you what I did. Okay, if as I'm telling you that um, this component input, when it gets into the MET container, you must tell me the name of it, okay? The name. And this name must come from your resolver, meaning that from here, okay? Okay, as you can see, name, okay? Let's see, name, okay? As you can see. Maybe on TypeScript, it does that you will see it but here on javascript i'm not sure but what i'm going to try to do i'm going to put a prop here which does not exist in the input the input have a name okay intrinsically but it doesn't have a label because it's not it's not it's not uh, it doesn't have the prop label i hope um hey, javascript okay guys sorry Pure JavaScript doesn't warn me. It doesn't tell me that this input doesn't take this. Okay. Um, this is that I will show you how I have bypassed this in TypeScript. Okay. These are the shortcomings of JavaScript. But since it's taking it anyway, though intrinsically, this guy doesn't have it. Okay. The reason why we are putting it, it's simply because met container requires it that's how i've created this container okay i want it to provide you with the label as well okay you will see it now so let's check we've got the name we've got the label uh the label is username which is here let's just call it um the user dash name okay i want this to be unique in such a way that you can relate this to this and this to that okay as you can see guys it looks like now based on this okay here we are spreading these okay but javascript is telling us that we can put this here without spreading as you can see guys javascript it's um remember i told you there's also an element of art here in coding um some disciplines are very objective okay meaning that there are some objective there are things rules and regulations things that you have to adhere to okay here in programming we are a bit careless in a way you have to impose those rules to yourself it's your choice to use the design pattern it's something that's your choice and if you don't use them maybe you might get a job and get a good salary okay but it just depends on your overall vision okay for me what i see myself as based on being a guy who once wrote movie script in the movie industry scripting industry there's somebody called the script doctor the guy that is very knowledgeable about writing films and scripting and they can help you to craft a better story i think i want to be a react doctor okay i don't like to work for google and do a very simple and a controlled minor thing okay it might pay me well but i don't think i will last there okay enough about that so as you can see javascript is very careless it allows us to push things which are not the props which are not intrinsically inside this one that's why this is working so let's look at how many lines of code is this okay so what i did using the met container i have just created an input i have gave it a name and i've gave it a label and as you can see user dash label okay just with these lines of code okay now if i want to put three of these check here okay um here i want the last name okay let's make sure okay this is exactly like this and the last one is email okay here this is the last name okay um the label is last name okay let's save and see boom as you can see guys okay this is a beautiful interface okay this is a beautiful interface i don't have to type a lot of things and register and spread i am spreading nothing here okay this is scalability and, and easy to maintain if you could be asked to maintain this code 
believe me i'm 100 percent convinced it doesn't matter what knowledge you have about coding but this is easy okay why am i so high into this design pattern i was once employed in a company and i was responsible for maintaining a spaghetti code it was not easy for me to tell the boss that your code is spaghetti but it was <sighs> a nightmare to edit it and i was expected to do so so that experience um, gave me some sort of a different way in which i'm supposed to look at coding okay so when i'm writing my own code i'm also thinking for someone else who's going to come and maintain my own code okay and then let's put uh the last one okay and the last one is um, i think it's the email Okay, let's, we very important that um, this is the same as that one, okay? So, what else do we need? I think we need a button, okay? We need a button here. Okay, we need a button. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't think this is, let's see, where do I get this button? Da -da 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 -da, button type map. Okay, I think the actual HTML button, it's a small letter, okay. We don't have any framework for now, so this is the button. Obviously, let's see what error is this going to give, okay. Let's type save, okay. Let's see what error is this going to give, if it will give any, but where is the button then? Okay, where is the button here? Okay, as you can see, guys, it's giving us an error, okay. Simply because, let's just check here. We need to put a type on this button. And we need to put the name on this button. We need to put the label, though we are not going to use it, okay? Let's put the name. Okay, remember, this is JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript can allow us, okay, to put something which is not there, okay? Uh, which might, well, you never know, it might cause an error. You never know. So that's why I encourage TypeScript. And then what we need to do as well, we need label. Okay. Let's see if we do all of this. Is this going to work? Okay. And the type, what type of this button? And the type, it's submit. Okay. Let's see. Is it going to work? As you can see, guys. Okay. This is JavaScript. It's working very well. There's no need for us to to spread things just like this one okay let's go back guys and see i've got how many lines of code here i've got one two three four five okay inside here inside my jsx as you can see guys this is commented so i can't count it as line okay and this has been commented so maybe um one two three four five six seven eight inside the return eight lines they give me the exact same thing. Let's test it because we before I brag too much about my Met container. Let's test it. What if I click here? Check here, guys. It's telling me last name, 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 name is required. Where is that? Here is the last name, name, name required. Okay, as you can see, it's changing. Okay. And what else? Last name, name, name required. Okay, cool. Also put a valid email. Okay, I hope, guys, you can see that these are the validations. Okay. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I am missing something. Sorry. I think I am lying here. Let's see. Okay. This is the label. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. The required one. Okay. Obviously, um, this form is not well styled. Okay. So the validations are here. Where is the required? Say name required. As you can see, here is it. Okay. Put a valid email. Put a valid email. Here is it with a double D. Okay. Put a valid email there. Max two. I haven't hit that one yet. What about the username? Am I validating the username? Um, max two. Okay. I think uh, the username um, that I can accept. Okay, a minimum of three and two. Okay, this one I just have to make a research on it and see what it actually does. Maybe I can test it here and put only one thing here and test. Okay. But this video is not really about that. Okay, let's see. Max. Okay, as you can see. So if we put more, it looks like it's exactly the way I thought it is. I wonder why would a person have got two characters, okay? Let's say this guy is BL. 
we cannot go more. So as you can see, guys, okay, this is the matte pattern. Okay, this is my own invention. Now, if it's working, okay, okay, this one it needs to be two, and this one must be something, and this one needs a valid email. As you can see, now if it's working, let's see, is it going to console log? Is it going to take this to on submit and console log it? Let's go here, guys, and check. As you can see, guys, it's doing the same thing. Okay, that means we are done. Okay, tell me if you could have been given a code like this, would it be difficult for you to maintain? Check here. Okay, this is only the code that you need to work on. Okay copy here and check this is save you can change it change it here change name change this and then you relate all of this to this one and then you are done you've got your own code okay let's go back and check on the react hook form okay was it the one that we were comparing on or is the one on github let's go check the one on github let's see so if you want to know how many lines of code from here to here i am not that good in mathematics Okay, so what we need to do, we need to take 66, okay, and then we need to minus plus minus 10, okay, just for making sure that our math is more like fine, let's minus 15, okay, so let's minus 15 on 60, 40, I think it's plus minus 45, okay, so this, okay, this is 45 lines. Okay, this is 45 lines, 45 lines. And this is almost like 10 lines at maximum. Okay, so what are you learning from here? Okay, let's go back to chat GPT. Okay, now you are supposed to, I'm not sure. You know when the, 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 the teacher is teaching the kids, okay, in preschool or in kindergarten, okay, this is what class efficiency this is efficient okay this is efficient okay clean efficient okay is this flexible of course this is flexible i can i can move this to the top okay it's easy okay guys i hope you get on to say it's easy you can see okay did i use the best practices okay the best i know how okay the best i know how okay but it's best practices Communication. Did I struggle to explain to you what's going on here? Were you struggling to understand what is this guy talking about based on this interface? This is very simple. We've got the, the function that you will use to receive your data and pass your own on submit. This is it. You pass your own submit. Here you pass your resolver. Okay. Maybe if it's yep, it's going to be yep. If it's um Ah, my apologies about that. If it's yep, it's yep. If it's Zod, it's Zod. And then from there, you declare. You are not coding. You are declaring. Okay, declarative coding, very clean. You are declaring your inputs. Okay. And then from there, you are done. The met container will take care of the rest. Okay. Maintainability. I think you can see it can be easier to maintain this. You can change. What if maybe you want to create another form? That's simple. Okay. You could copy and paste this, as you can see. And then, let's say, please subscribe. This is a new form now, okay? Please share, okay? You are the best, I believe you are the best student, but obviously you didn't get a video like this one that will explain things simpler okay then let's go back and see okay do we have another form yes we have another form okay um where is it here is it please subscribe please what what and please what what okay let's see when i type here okay this is a new form okay different form reusability and then what if maybe when i click here what will happen Okay, mm, let's see. Okay, I'm using the same method. Okay, the one that console log. If I want to, I can create a new one. Okay, let's see. Is it going to console log? 
Okay, I can use a new one if I want to. Okay, let's see. Okay, obviously there are some issues, okay, um, which they are not technical issues necessarily, but just to show you that um, this uh, works very well, okay, let's just, um, let me just give it a new on submit, okay, just to show you guys, this is just a copy and paste, okay, const on submit to, okay, let's just change this, because obviously if everything is the same, 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 there might be some issues okay obviously but what i'm going to do i'm just going to change my own submit and save okay so let's just see but guys i hope you do get the essence okay um from subscribe let's say sub okay sub okay um where is the max of two okay it might happen even this or well, there was an error here okay um okay and then you are the best of the best let's say best okay let's go back and check what do i want to do um i want to go to console and i want to see my data being displayed here um let me see if i do it here obviously it wants me to validate okay I just have to look into this, but I hope you do get the essence. Um, da -da -da -da. Obviously, this copy and paste thing. Okay, let me just remove this one, at least for now, just for the sake of testing. Okay, to get this to work. Okay. Okay. Let me right click. Let me refresh. My apologies about that, but I hope, guys, you get the essence of it. Okay, the reusability. Now, I just want to get it to work so that you can see that this is. Am I on the right place, or what might have happened? Okay, let's see. Let's. Okay, cool. I am glad this happened. Actually, I'm glad this happened. Let me show you the other part interesting part about this med container now we are let's say we're having some issues and we don't really know what happens cool this is normal okay normal this is the label okay is um, are our name still the same yes last name first name uh, email and pattern i'm happy with this and then in terms of on submit we are using on submit two. that is not much of a problem our resolvers everything is still cool okay fine check here guys we want to know now what might be the problem let's watch our own values okay i have got um watch field i've got a property here when you put watch field check here okay it's telling us what's going on here check here guys okay we are watching the field as we type okay if i'm typing here that means this this subscribe go to the last name okay and this goes to the first name and this goes to the email okay as you can see guys i'm watching so i am confident that um i can get these okay i do get these i'm 100 percent happy okay let's click um console click here and see what will happen um let's see let's see let's see let's see on the code this is the save button everything works well let's click here now it's taking us back to here it's telling us that this is supposed to be two this is an error cool that's okay and now it's working okay and it's working what if maybe we want to check our errors as we are typing that's not much of a problem let's watch our errors okay let's watch our errors go back here okay as you can see there are no errors at the moment what if maybe where we are supposed to have two we've got more than two error list the first error we have it's max equal to two as you can see here is the error and the other error that we have the next one say name is required um what else um say name is required i think we've got only two fields here oh the email okay as you can see okay so guys i have got this out of the box okay now i think you are starting to see whatever that i was trying to explain okay 
please don't forget to to hit that subscribe button if you like the content like this one okay cool now i think the last thing that i'm going to do are we still live by the way yes okay so the last thing that i'm going to do now okay i'm going to get inside this one okay let me just show you where is that register or oh, this sign in okay let me just show you something guys okay this is ugly right i hope you will agree this is ugly okay cool now what i'm going to do i am going to what can i say comment this and bring back a different form is this ugly no this is interesting what have i used here i have used the material ui form that was already there okay this is a material ui form as you are typing i am watching my fields here if i'm submitting let's check do we have any errors password required enter a valid email now i have used a library okay to help me style these but the trick is still the same it can be easier and simple to maintain these okay this one i have used the the mui the material ui and then here i have used next.js okay specifically here so here i have used next.js okay check here okay mm, let me just okay so here i have used next.js okay submit as you can see showing us the errors the errors disappear as you type them okay let's select any of these as you can see guys the error disappears as you type them now let's get into the code and let me explain what is going on to this library of mine so in case you might want um the met container okay in case you might want the met container please check the link in the description and check um a link to source code okay at the moment the code is not there believe me okay it's not there okay but um if you can subscribe to my email newsletter as soon as i'm done with the met container i will send it to everyone who has subscribed so it means that if you subscribe now obviously you stand a chance of getting it as soon as i what can i say publish it okay now let's get to the met container okay just to show you how it is okay maybe if you might be interested i think it took me like let's say seven days max to do this and finish it okay so now i'm just going to give you a clue now you know how react cook form works you know everything you know everything so i'm just going to show you how i have used those okay these are the things that i'm importing from react hook form you know this okay importing controllers maybe controllers i didn't teach you okay and other things but these i'm just getting them from here this is our use form as well we've got a function the function is called met container okay it uses typescript um so meaning that um this is a generic function okay it doesn't know the data type beforehand you need to pass it it's going to be saved here on this p and it must extend field values don't mind about that this is the react hook forms types okay that's why i told you this layer of typescript you need to get it right because if you don't you are going to have some limitations believe me okay so just note that this is a generic type meaning that it will always take the type when you are using it why it's doing that because beforehand even though this is javascript it can take everything typescript um doesn't do that it needs to know the type sometimes we don't know the type beforehand okay we don't know the type before and we don't know the shape beforehand this can be first name the other one it can be last name password the other one it can be different so i decided to make it uh, generic okay um so and then i'm receiving children okay which are the children these guys are the children where are these all right these guys are the children so what i'm doing in these children okay i'm hijacking them okay i'm hijacking them and then before i render them okay before i render these what i will do i will inject the spreaded register as usual okay to all of them 
Okay, I hope you do get that one. So let me show you how am I going to do that. What skill is that? I think it's the React skill. It's more like knowing more about React and how to manipulate uh, React components or functional components, okay, and elements. Okay, so I'm receiving these children and then this is get form data. Okay, I'm receiving that as well. This is the type of it. Watch field, is it true or it's not true? The resolver, okay, as you can see, I have typed the resolver here and then we've got watch. I hope this one is clear. Okay, const now I'm using the use form. Okay, this mode all it just means that report errors as soon as they happen. So that's why when it's empty, the text box is empty, React Fook Home will quickly trigger an error. It doesn't wait for you to submit. And then I've got the resolver, you know the resolver. Okay, so I am passing on the React hook form. This is what I'm doing under the hood. I'm taking the resolver that I've received here, I'm putting it here const child to array okay this is the fun part okay i'm taking all the children i am converting them into an array okay as react element this is very important as react element okay this is deep typescript and in this package what i did i have muted typescript okay because this is work in progress what do i mean i have muted typescript check here okay you see i am changing types here Okay, one might feel like, no, this is cheating. Hence, I'm saying I have some sort of muted TypeScript. On some cases, I just declare things as any because TypeScript is, is too much. Okay, um, let's check here if this will detect some things. As you can see, okay, sometimes TypeScript can be hectic. Okay, so at this point in time, I was not interested in TypeScript. I was interested in solving the problem. And then when I'm done with that, I will come back and work on a TypeScript layer, okay? So this is more like, this is not needed. This is not the best way to use TypeScript, okay? We are, we are advised on TypeScript not to have any, okay? Meaning that you are killing it. So I killed TypeScript for a reason here. Okay, so as you can see, I'm taking all of the children inside there. I'm putting them on child to array, okay? I'm changing this. TypeScript um, uh, typed errors as any, don't mind about that. Okay, this is handle on submit. Okay, when this form somebody submit, as you can see, it uses what it has received here. Okay, and it gives us this data so that it can receive it. Cool. And then we need to render a group of um, inputs, right? Okay, meaning that we need to loop through all these children, okay, and render them again. Cool. This group is equal to children to array, those arrays, okay, those children, all of them. Dot map, I'm going to loop inside them. I'm going to take each and every one of them, okay? And then if each one of them, they have got a prop called controlled, okay? Here on React Fook form, maybe it's going to be um a cost for a different what can i say for a different video they are controlled input they are uncontrolled input so if this is controlled okay handle it like this i didn't show you this one okay and it's also very important so i'm going to skip it a little bit okay so if it's uncontrolled okay which is now each component okay get the field name of the component that's why each field needs to have a name as a prop, okay? If you don't put it, there will be an error. So we want to go to that component dot props dot name, okay? We put the name here. This name falls into a key of P. Don't mind much about this TypeScript, okay? And then we want the label. Go and get on the same input dot props dot get the label. Const is submit. We want to know the input that we are working on, is it submit? Is it a submit button? How do you check that? Check this input component dot props dot type. Is it submit? Is this equal? Okay. So, no, so let's see. Uh, instead of expected. Oh, okay. Um, thank God that I did um, this tutorial because I didn't see this. Okay. I didn't see this. Okay, so it's asking, is this submit? Yes. Okay, we want to know if is this a submit um, button. Okay, cool. Now, let cloned input. Now, we are going to take this input. 
the one that is raw we are going to make a copy of it as you can see now we are starting to cheat a little bit okay we are cheating now a little bit we are cloning this using a react method which is clone element we are cloning this okay as a react element and we are pushing in okay check here we are being smart here we are pushing in the spread the same one the field name we are getting it from here okay from the the component itself and then don't mind about the type scripting so meaning that now this new cloned component is the same component okay but with this spread and then i am going to return let's check here um okay i'm returning this element now it has got a form label as you can see this is the label of the form input.label that's the text and then it has been styled using tailwind okay so meaning that the styling doesn't really take place because this react project doesn't have the typescript sorry tailwind and then as you can see i'm putting the label here before i render that object again the cloned one okay and then i have taken care of all of the error handling okay so meaning that when i am looping here on this map i'm going to loop through all of them manipulate 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 them and push them here okay and then i'm going to display them inside this form the handle submit of this form here is it okay it takes handle on submit and the handle on submit remember it makes use of the get form the one that it received from there and then what else are we doing we are almost done here now where is the form here is the form okay here is the group and then if you've got the watch okay we can watch the field if you've got our uh, watch the errors we can watch the errors and that is it okay and that is it finale okay um so um this is i'm applying this obviously in a javascript way that's why we didn't catch some errors there but i think you did get the essence okay so let's just do a recap when we are closing okay now i have used the container pattern let me just use um do, 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 do. let's bend the concept okay let's bend the concept before i close okay the container pattern in 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 react okay what it does it says that you've got this layout okay my apologies about this this is a layout okay and inside the layout you've got the contents right okay so this pattern states that you can have things you can have containers okay which are going to be responsible for the layout how things are supposed to be positioned it's a container okay how things are going to be positioned and these containers can be responsible for the css the styling okay style put some general styles here on how things are going to contain and then you can have some components um even here you can even put some logic okay which are going to be needed by these guys the actual ui components okay let's say this is a form okay if it will need something fetch data from the server this guy will be responsible for that and it will feed it here that's basically the idea of the pattern so what i'm doing i'm doing exactly the same thing i've got a met container here that is responsible for making sure that it just consumes the form elements which is the input and the submit button okay it will take care of all other things okay i hope you can see the practicality and the implementation of um the presentation container pattern of react okay makes our lives super super simple and i'm going to use this um library or this package that i've created um to solve my to solve real life problems for my clients okay cool let's continue so this is it clean and straight to the point so i have used the container pattern so as you can see i encapsulate everything there 
and I'm using this. So now I can create as many forms as I can. I can take this and plug it here. Okay. Check here. This is what I've used, I think, here. Okay. I've used it. Okay. I've used it here, as you can see, guys. Okay. You can quickly create form here. I'm using ShotCN. Okay. Obviously, here I was not using it. Um, Here, I have used the React hook form, but I have not used the mate container okay so maybe let's answer the question before we wrap this one if one may ask which is a better form between these ones okay here i was not applying react hook form mm, at all this was the project that has failed because of this reason it's not this one uh this one um i think i am using it here i think i am using it here so this one might be safe okay but i i have not practically like i'm not sure to the details the finer part remember i was still working on it refining it so basically um the brain teaser or the brain testing uh game i just wanted to clearly show you that as a newbie you favor the code based on the ui okay and that's wrong okay beautiful ui doesn't mean the code is scalable okay understand that okay so it doesn't mean that the code is scalable it might happen the architecture of a code is not as beautiful as you think so this one obviously doesn't make it okay but i'm not going to close it for now this one is the perfect one because it's the one that i have used finally 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 to test the package okay if you might want the package please check uh, the link in the description and click on the source code subscribe to our substack clone then i will update you as soon as i am done with the package if can if you might want to ask me something in details you can just click here and come here click to discovery call obviously you can contact me want to learn um um figma you can just go here guys i teach um amazing figma skills here so let's continue and wrap up so now let me show you how this one is i have used react hook form but i have not used the met pattern uh, container let's check um have i opened all of these okay i think the code for this beautiful multi-form part is this one yes so let's see where we are this is the home page as you can see let's see how many lines 131 okay as you can see let's just walk through it um read through it where is this is this is the on submit okay this is the on submit as you can see as we did okay um this is the zord schema this is the validation okay for all these forms um let's see um type of a form okay cool what is this okay here i'm creating uh, the type of a form okay um it's a form type from this schema okay and then um the container schema obviously here i was testing so there might be some things which don't really make sense okay um my apologies about that and then um type container don't mind about this let's check Okay, is this on submit is declared but it's never used okay cool let's just check here where is the actual form let's see this is the resolver okay cool where is the actual form oh it looks like even here i have used the met container okay it looks like maybe i have made some changes okay i have used the met container here okay and also i have implemented a controlled um yeah yeah i am lost in my own code let me show you why okay my sincere apologies about this because i was sure that in this one i have not used the met container now i'm asking myself why i have used the met container and it turns out that the page that i was in is the same project but this one on home okay as you can see so if i want to be here okay this one i have used it the one on home if i want to be here as you can see this is forward slash form so let's go back here my apologies about that okay code can be that complex sometimes we don't have to be here okay on home as you can see we need to come here and look for form okay and then we can come here 
okay now look at the let's call this the mess okay as much as it's beautiful but check here how many lines of code yes it's a multi-form part i understand but this is too much okay this is too much 234 this is too much okay let's just check the complexity okay without the um, the met container okay obviously we've got some sections here that's not much of a problem let's just get into the render part of it as you can see where is the form the form starts here okay uh da, 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 da. is it the form that i'm looking for where is the on submit and submit let's just check where is the on submit of the form okay obviously guys if you see me getting lost as you can see here i'm registering if you see me getting lost i am lost for real okay simply because this is not the best of all okay um let me just look for handle submit here i will i have to rely on searching let's see handle okay this is the handle submit i am getting it from the use form okay um then how does this form handle its own submit maybe i didn't even finish that but guys what i wanted to explain to you here is that this code as beautiful as it is but it's not well architectured okay it's beautiful when you look at it it's beautiful you are tempted to say that no this is the best code i want to use this one because look at that error handling and everything okay as you can see this is nice but it's not well architectured i am Matthew singati i'm the designer and developer from south africa if you like content like this please don't forget to subscribe see you on the next one